Hey, I'm Louis Palmer, and welcome to PlayBetterDrums.com. And welcome to this lesson covering some left hand exercises, left hand workouts, if you like. Uh, this was a member request video. Um, someone was asking about how they improve their left hand. There are a bunch of uh, lessons on the website dealing with endurance exercises. Um, there's one exercise uh, called right, left, 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 uh, which deals with obviously left hand, that's left hand heavy. And that was, as far as I'm aware, was uh, like an Ed Shaughnessy exercise or something that he taught and said you should do a thousand a day to really get your left hand going. So that's a good one, um, making sure that you're really at brisk tempos and the left hand's nice and strong. But the problem with that exercise is that you're only dealing with non-accented notes with the left hand. So I think a great way to improve your left hand strength is to do exercises with accents in. And some of the unison things we did uh, in the endurance section are great for that. Different 16th note combinations. Some uh, of those exercises were on the practice pad lessons. Um, but then it's good to isolate the left hand and forget the right hand and just do left hand. And these exercises can be done on a pad um, or a pad with no rebound, a pillow, something away from the drums. You can get a lot of work done on pads away from the drums. But this is actually also a good one um, to do at the drums, at the snare drum, because um, when we throw in the accents, we can make the accents rim shots and work on our left hand rim shot, because a lot of drummers are not um, either not confident or not consistent with their left hand backbeat, which of course we need for playing grooves. So first thing to do is start out with just groups of four, accent on the first note. And whatever tempo you start at could be much slower than that, whatever you need to do to get the sound consistent. Because although this is an endurance exercise, we also want to think about sound because we're at the snare drum and we're working on our left hand rim shot as well. So I'm making sure that the bead of the stick is in the middle of the drum, not at the side. We don't want that sound. And we want the, the sound to be consistent, the rim shot sound to be consistent every time and not miss any rim shots. And we also don't want the impact of the rim shot to affect the evenness of the notes that come after it. That often happens. Uh, you'll play a rim shot and then you'll rush uh, the next notes. So then, as soon as you have the exercise down and it's fairly consistent, then you want to work on tempos. So that would be a top tempo for me, so I would find something around that, maybe a tiny bit less to begin with, and I'd set the click, uh, quarter notes or eighth notes, uh, and then I'd work on that and gradually go up in increments of, uh, depending on how close to my top tempo I was, uh, maybe increments of five. Um, anyway, so then the next exercise, uh, or the following ones, we just add more accents. So we can then do fives and sevens. Um, and familiar accent pattern that we've done before with fives. So we're just accenting every five notes, uh, and but then adding another accent. So we have that that accent pattern. So with the left hand. So this immediately is more tricky than the fours because we've got an accent, an accent, a quiet note, then another accent, and then more quiet notes. So it's just a different combination. It feels different to play. And you've got to, when you speed it up, you're getting those two room shots close together. 
So in terms of motion uh, with the left hand, it's awkward, but it's great practice. And then you would go on to seven, so you just add another two notes and add an accent. So although these are odd groupings and they're going over the bar line, it's just sixteenth notes. It's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know, bars of sixteenth notes with hi-hat and chord note every four notes, but we're grouping them in sevens. So don't worry too much about keeping track of bars because this is you're supposed to do this for long, long periods of time, but make sure obviously you're playing the left foot and you're in time with the click. So when you're close to your top tempo and you're struggling and you start to really like uh, not be able to play the pattern anymore, then you would back off for a little bit, maybe play something else uh, with the left hand or give it a breather and then go again and tr keep trying to push the tempos. And then you can do other uh, accent patterns. There's another couple on the PDF uh, involving some singles and doubles separately. So. This one is tricky because uh, it's a double accent, like literally close together, whereas the fives and sevens had a little ghost note in between. This one is together. So that's a really tricky one. And then the last one of the PDF is this. Not particularly easier or more difficult than the others, but just an example of how you can place accents in different places. You can come up with your own patterns. Um, you could mess with where that double is. So the second to last one on the PDF, uh, we could change from put the double at the beginning. and then uh, put them all together, whether it's at a slow tempo or, for, or your top tempo, uh, but try and do uh, um, short periods of each one and then move on to another one. <laughs> 